Yeah, welcome again to our first virtual direct mail days. For those of you who just joined, I am Ernst August Formal, Product Manager, Mailing Solutions with WND. And with me is Reinhard Glade, my predecessor as a product manager inserting here, and my counterpart now in our US office in Lenexa, Kansas. When it comes to inserting, Reinhard is probably the most profound source. He's in the industry for quite some time and he knows absolutely everything. Uh, today, we'd like to present to you our new BB820, which has been developed on the platform of our BB700S2. This machine is well known for its productivity and flexibility, and actually it is the benchmark for innovative direct mail and specialty mail applications like Vote by Mail. Reinhard, just to begin with, I have two questions to you. Number one, what triggered the development of the BB820? especially on the background that we had, the BB700S2, which, which actually can do everything. And number two, what is new and different on the 820 versus the BB700? Right, first of all, thanks a lot for the introduction, Hans August. Uh, yes, uh, we all enjoy the huge success that we do have with our BB700. Mm -hmm. And uh, since introduction of the machine, which is, goes back almost 15 years by now, We've continuously developed the platform and made it better and better. But we still saw potential for a machine that would serve the direct mail size range okay. that we have in the market. Now, the BB700 is a multi-format machine. Right. It runs everything from a 7 3 quarter up to a 9 by 12 and even a 10 by 13. Right. Everything at 16K. Okay. So even a 10 by, 10 by 13 at 16K, yeah. which drove the consideration that by sacrificing on the large format, we should be able to gain additional speed potential for the direct mail size. Mm -hmm. Direct mail sizes I would define as anything between a 7 3 quarter and a 6 by 9.5. The machine does even do a 6.5 by a nine and a half. And it also does the number 14, which is a five inch by 11 and a half. Just let me interrupt you for a <laughs> minute. As for our European customers, the sizes right now just mentioned are standard US sizes. Uh, for our European customers, the minimum size would be 98 millimeters by 184 millimeters. And the maximum 165 to 292 millimeters, which are probably the most common sizes in direct mail here. Yeah. And uh, for those who are more familiar with uh, uh, DL, though it's smaller than a DL, up to more than a uh, C5. C5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now, the result of our consideration was the result of the development: a machine that runs 20k again throughout the format range between a seven three quarter and a six and a half by nine and a half or a number fourteen. Okay. Um, a machine that will complement the BB700. Uh, since it does not run flats, it may succeed the 700 in environments where no flat requirement exists. Okay. Um, however, the machine will maintain all the features mm -hmm. of the 700 as it shares the platform. So you look at the reliability that the 700 is famous for, you look at the modularity and the flexibility that it brings along, the flexibility in terms of applications. Yeah. The machine can actually be configured to job based on the modularity mm -hmm. of the feeder and components. And of course, productivity, right. the intelligent error handling goes okay. along with this. And last but not least, the integrity that we have in our machines based on the operating system 3.0 and eventually with the new machines. So 4 in general, the BB820 can do almost everything at the BB700 except flats when exactly. it comes to sizes, but it does it much faster. Exactly, as simple as that. Okay. Reinhard, can you go a little bit deeper into the details and explain the new features on the BB820? Absolutely. But before I do that, let me uh, emphasize on the fact that the two platforms, BB820 and BB700, are shared. Which means that basically all components of a BB700 will be compatible to the A20. 
compatible in, in the sense of interchangeability? Interchangeable. So if your application requires a feeder that's being developed for the BB700, that feeder will actually work on the BB820 with the result that you will be able to run that application. Maybe not at 20K, okay. but you will be able to right. handle basically all applications that you run on the BB700 on the BB820, mm -hmm. except obviously a flat. Okay, that's good. The same also applies to the periphery, whether it is autoloaders, read and print enhancements, or our vertical stacker. Mm -hmm. Identical platform and shared between the two platforms. So that's, I mean, that's a huge advantage. If you have a BB700 and you need an autoloader, you can move it around. Absolutely. Now let's take a look to the new features that okay. make it BB820. The first one, our new rotary feeder RF3. Developed the platform, obviously, of the RF2 of the BB700. Few changes, a few improvements based on the smaller format and the higher speed, mm -hmm. slightly adjusted feeder geometry, the, the, the angle between the feeder deck and the gripper and sucker uh, mechanism, um, an optimized cam for the smaller product and the, and, the, and the higher speed, individual vacuum provision to the suckers across okay. the uh, product width, and eventually a jogger on the backrest of the feeder to present the product in a perfect way. Uh, and, and those changes or new developments you just mentioned, have they been necessary because of the higher speed or were there other reasons behind that? Obviously, if you look at the cam, yes. Uh, but, but the other, especially the vacuum and the backrest, this is to give the feeder the necessary tolerance to not just feed 20K with the perfect product but with product that the industry, industry knows. Okay, so a more robust or smooth run even with imperfect material. Uh, for the, correct. Okay. For industry standard, mm -hmm. consistent feeding and high nets on the belt. Good. Let me emphasize that the, the rotary feeder for WD is still our primary feeder. Mm -hmm. Primary feeder because with the consistent separation of the product with vacuum, the gripper and belt transfer mechanism in, into the track, um, we run consistent at high speed. Okay. But today at innovative applications, which means always means personalized applications, camera reading is a key mm -hmm. on one or in many cases yeah, yeah. multiple feeder positions. Now, when it comes to reading, again, the rotary feeder is the preferred feeder. Because, again, with the separation mode, the vacuum, the gripper mechanism, the timing and the speed of the product is always consistent. Mm -hmm. Your read rates yeah, will yeah. be okay. superior to any other technology. Understand. And the read areas on the product are larger than with other, any other feeder technology. Okay. So again, rotary feeder, again yes. on this machine you see three. Yeah is the preferred feeder in our composition of okay. feeders. And next Good. to it, you see yeah, yeah. a friction feeder. Reinhard, what else is new on the BB820? Let's take a closer look. A small change between the 700 and the 820 is the dual lock chain that we have on the 820. Okay. That allows us to place straps centrally in the, in the track to control sets traveling. Okay. Um, more significant, the change in the insertion module, where we have a insert pusher assembly now with three pairs of insert pushers compared to the previous design on the 700 with two pairs. A and why is it three pairs now? What, what does it? The what three it pairs for? at the higher speed allow us a much more harmonized speed profile during the insertion oh, process. Okay. Also, standard on the A20, three vacuum individual Venturi nozzles for the vacuum control in the insertion process. Okay. Common between the BBA20 and the BB700, the new operating system BSC 4.0 with the production cockpit that you see here, which is the normal running screen okay. on the machine. Good. Finally, two developments in the exit area of the machine. The first one, an advanced speed control for the ceiling section 
which does not just follow the speed of the machine, but also takes into consideration the size of the envelope, resulting in a much reduced exit speed of smaller envelopes. Uh, again, a benefit of a fully servo-driven machine. The second smaller upgrade is an enhanced reading window for exit reading, exit verification and control of a kicker on the exit conveyor or on the OC4. This enlarged window now enables us not just to read it to decode, but also an IMB. Okay, Reinhard, uh, now we know about the technical specification of this machine, but what about the application as we wanted to insert and we wanted to use the envelope which we made on the WND410i, a shape cut envelope. How about this application? Please uh, the talk The shape cut envelope obviously presents a challenge for uh, any or at least most inserters uh, that you find on the market. Uh, not many inserters will really touch the envelope as it's non red angular and it's hard to control. In okay. The um, secondly, the shape cut envelope presents a challenge due to reduced clearance, yeah, side I to see. side tolerance right, in the right. envelope. And again, the fact that the envelope is difficult to control in the insertion mode. Okay. But, as you will see, the BB820 as well as the BB700 handles these kinds of envelopes terrifically well. So this tight tolerance wouldn't be a problem for, for this machine? It's one of the key features of the BBs, that the side-to-side -side tolerances are far reduced to any other machine okay. on the market. Good, but I mean, that was about the shape cut and the tight tolerance, but I mean, in addition to that, we converted digitally pre-printed personalized envelopes. Now we have to match those with the inserts. How do you do that? Which is the, ne the, the next challenge. Now here I need to go back to one of the key features that we introduced to the S2 platform a couple of years ago, which is our patent protected auto mismatch recovery technology. Okay. The feature that allows us to automatically, automatically recover sequence errors when running two or multiple personalized streams by either retaining a piece in the, right. in, in the feeder, batch feeding, diverting faulty sets, and continuing running without machine stop and without operator intervention, okay. resulting on higher nets on the belt and a reduced risk of integrity uh, mistakes. But, okay, this was within the document stream, but now right. you have an additional challenge as what happens if the envelope doesn't match or if the document doesn't match with the envelope? Two things. First of all, of course, we need to read the envelope. Yep. To read the envelope, two options. You can have a control code on the front panel mm -hmm. that, however, then eventually will need to be covered by stamp. Okay. Or you have the code yeah, that's what on the reverse on. panel yeah. that where the inner position where eventually will be covered by the seal okay. flap. Now, in order to read the envelope in that position, we have developed a read position inside the insertion module mm -hmm. in the envelope gripper track where we can read the envelope from below. Okay. And in case that we have an excess envelope, which means an envelope that doesn't have a corresponding insert, that envelope is diverted in our standard envelope 40 envelope bin, okay. where usually would you would have envelopes with sticking flaps. What when, it, when there is another way around, if you have an XX document, you don't have an envelope for? Here, our new module comes in play, our divert gate on the track. Okay. So pieces, inserts, that would have no corresponding envelopes, but need to be disposed of because the next personalized envelope does match with the next envelope. Okay. You need to get rid of that envelope, uh, that, that insert, and that's why we have the new divert on the track. Clever solution. Okay, Reiner, thank you very much. I think we all got a very good insight uh, of the features of this new BB820. But now I think it's time to see this machine run. Absolutely.
The VVA20 here represents a common direct mail configuration. You see an 8 feeder base with 4 feeders, 3 RF3 rotary feeders and 1 HF2 friction feeder. Three pockets offer the option to add feeders where and when the application requires. New, our divert on the track for the processing of pre-personalized outer envelopes. The OC4 on-edge conveyor or vertical stacker is an option, but at 20k or 100,000 envelopes per shift, especially when running multiple shifts or when running with single manning, the unit becomes almost a no-brainer. I hope this presentation provided a good overview to you what the new BB820 can do. And like always, if you need more information on this or any other machines, please contact our sales manager or go to our website. Thank you.